Welcome to LI on the Rise. This is all about people who are chasing their dreams. And today I'm with a hip hop artist. Please introduce yourself. Uh, appreciate you for having me, sir. Uh, niggas know the fucking vibes. It's Busy Backing, formerly known as King B. Uh, some of you might know me as King B, but yeah. Came from New York, Long Island, stand up. What's going on, Chris? I'm living the dream, man. How you doing? I'm doing really extremely well. I can't complain, bro. How are you been? Yeah, I've been good, man. Uh, life's been moving fast. Uh, I've been trying to keep up, but it's good on this side. It's great to see you back at both of Thanks, man. Um, before I even go on, shout out to Chris. Um, leader of Ella on the Rise, in my opinion, one of the four founders, I should say, or four fathers of this, this whole scene on Long Island. Like, bro, really painted the picture and i see a lot of people taking the blueprint and running with it so shout out to you bro for real <laughs> yeah i appreciate the flowers man I, I really do it means a lot well deserved brother well deserved thank you man uh what are you smoking on right now oh gas always no mids no no bullshit no that shit go bro is, is it like a fancy name like blue dream train wreck oh oh <laughs> oh it's either you know i get that shit from my boy uh you or oh, that OV pal, man, straight from straight from the neighborhood. <laughs> so you ready to do this a little faded? Oh uh, yeah, brother. Let's get to it. Just to start things off with you, for those that don't know, you are a part of a collective rap group called FOE. And mm -hmm. you guys were together for like a couple of years, but FOE is not a thing anymore. And the group split up. So you wanna explain what happened? I'm only asking because like you guys were riding with foe for so long and you know people are gonna be tuned in like thinking like what the fuck happened to that so i just want to ask for those people thinking that what i can say is um people being around foe and people that knew us as the brand uh family over everything you know me the other guys um there was just a lot going on behind the scene that just people just didn't know like they didn't wasn't aware about obviously because we didn't make it our business to really put it out there and let people know this and this and this is what's going on but like um more or less what i can really say about that situation is it was just too many people brought bring coming in and out you know what i'm saying coming in going out and when you have that in a big collective like it just doesn't work everything's just gonna fall apart it's gonna crumble um People are gonna have different views. It's the jealousy, uh, envy. Um, can't even say hatred. It's just more like jealousy and envy, and that shit really like it'll crush a, a rising group. Cause I can say what FOE, we started at the bottom, we came up, and it wasn't started by me. Let's get that out there. Like I came into the fold but it wasn't as big. It was only two, maybe one or two people until it, it got to 10 to 15 to everyone wanted to be a part of this collective team. And I don't know, in a way I could say people stopped believing in what we were trying to do and we were losing the direction of where we wanted to go with the music. Like having so many artists trying to push this person, push this person, push this person, as well as trying to push yourselves. It's just never going to work unless someone really makes it. So well, that's I, like what I could say about that situation. I, I appreciate you sharing that, man. Is, is there anyone in the group that you miss working with or do you like kind of being on your own and being independent? Um, I could say Ty, just Ty, shout out just Ty. You can go Yo, shout out just, just Ty. Ty. Uh, that's my brother. Like we, um, we still talk, you know what I'm saying? Not every day. Cause you know, we're grown now. We're not kids. Like we were like three years ago. We're in a different state, different mindset, um, different platforms. We're just living our lives in a way. So when we do talk, it's all nothing but love. And we have talked about collabing again because me and Ty have good chemistry on music. So I think, yeah, Tyler, definitely. definitely. Yeah. Shout, shout out, out this Ghostface time. as well. Shout out Ghostface as well. He's a good dude. Yeah, he he's still riding with you guys <laughs> after all this time. <laughs> yeah, he's a good he's a good dude. You know what I'm saying? He He's in his own world. I can't really the decipher what's going on in his head but he's in his own world and i just wish him the best i should have got none of love for the kid <laughs> yo shout out to texas yeah shout out to <laughs> you <Houston. laughs> 
<laughs> He's doing it big over there. If there's a local artist out there that might have a little friction with you or a little tension with you, and they decide to to diss you and put out songs dissing you, do you give a fuck about that or like you don't care? Like, does that get to you? Um, maybe a few years ago that would have really like bothered me, and everyone knows I was I was really a bug out, like I was I so like I didn't give a fuck. I I I would allow to diss him because in my head, if you're gonna diss me, I'm not gonna really like I'm not gonna pay attention to it. But then when I see you, you know what I'm saying. I just want to make sure that you meant what you said in that song because I'm not one to go back and forth with a motherfucker. You know what I'm saying. Even now, like people do diss me, and I, I do see this shit, or like I can't see this shit because people be having me blocked and shit, like like children and shit. So they'll make disses and block me and do this, and people will send it to me. Like, but I really don't care. It's like people see like they be hitting messages within my music, but I'm not really the one to go ahead and exploit a nigga's name or exploit this person's name or say this because like I don't really care. You're thinking about me when you wake up. To go and waste your money in the studio to talk about me, that that's congratulations, dickhead. You just wasted forty forty dollars because we know the studio sessions it don't be expensive the way I'm listening and the quality. You know what I'm saying, Chris? But yeah, I don't really care. It doesn't really bother me. There was a photo that you posted on Facebook, and the caption said, "When it comes to music, it's always been me versus everyone." What does that mean? Um. Basically, like, I've always felt like with me coming up, and this isn't me trying to search for a story or a sorry or is or pity, I should say, like, because I don't really care, but I feel like I've never got that, like, that cosign, that big cosign or that big share or that anything. Like, I've always had to just take this music and take what was given to me and just grind it out and grind it out and grind it out. Everything had to be just from here it couldn't be like yo shit this shit is because people wasn't really checking for me when I was first coming up you know what I'm saying people was like oh this nigga's rapping now and nah, 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 but not realizing I was been doing this I just decided to do this you know what I'm saying so no one was really checking me and I really feel like when I started to get a buzz and started to get my name out there people were just hating on that like yo why the fuck is this nigga like oh how the fuck is this nigga doing this and how the fuck is can't be doing this and doing this and it's like people put the false narrative in their heads like okay now if I fake start some beef with him or I start like having a fake problem with him then you know what I'm saying it is what it is so I always felt like yeah it's always been me versus everybody in the sense like I've never had that type of music where you know me I don't do features features with multiple people from Long Island that's just never been me I've always felt like I had to just be internal in a sense well, there's there's one big cosign I could I could think of fucking um the mixtape thing, they they had a they had a compilation of songs. Oh, they... okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. I think it was um Uncle Murder shit. There you go. That, okay, that, yeah, that, that shit was, was big. Dope. No, that was pretty. Yeah, big. that shit was dope. Yeah, and you got you got um a uh, punch in your fucking DMs and shit. So like, there's... oh yeah, yeah. Shout out punch. <laughs> Shout out punch. He's a good dude. Shout out punch. I'm still trying to work out the kinks. I'm trying to do some good business with him. He's a good dude. You know what I'm saying? The fact that he even reached back to me so quick. Like he's a real good dude. And mm -hmm. I've actually like, I'm glad you brought that up, Chris. Like, I do be getting co-signs now and I do be seeing people share me, you know, that are in the industry and like my music and like a like Long Island that are like legends to the music scene and like I do see people tuning in and showing love and I do appreciate that. So I can't never take none of that shit for granted because the fact that I'm doing that shit solo, it means so much more to me now than when I was in a group and doing it amongst 10, 20, 30 people. Now, if I could do this shit by myself, I feel like I'm proving something to myself in a way. Everyone wants to be in the studio, but no, no one wants to network. You got to talk yeah. to people. Yeah. And I can't even sit there and say like, Oh boy, I'm not even gonna say his name, but like, shout out to him because he definitely did have music on lock. Like, the way he was just his mind, like, I can't take that away from the kid because his mind is just so coordinated on music. I don't think nobody on Long Island has maybe the mindset when it comes to music, just the creativity, because he's been doing it longer than a lot of people. 
So I give him that. But I feel like when it comes to business, I just had that shit because that was my niche on what I feel like I was good at. Like being good in music and being good on business is two different things, I feel like. And I think even in your way, you're you're very good at business on the business side. Despite the art that comes with the podcast and the culture of that, I feel like you're very good with business. Mm-hmm. Shout out to you, my boy. I appreciate that. And, you know, I was I was even watching a podcast uh, the other night and they were saying like, you know, you got to be good in the studio and you got to perform and you got to be good at business and you got to be good at networking. And it's like, it's so hard to find that person that wears all those hats. Mm-hmm. A lot of people just want to go in the studio, make a banger, which is fine. But the other stuff is important too. How exactly. do you get yourself, you know, how do you get yourself out there? How do you the right people to talk to the right platforms to pay for and not to pay for. And people are blinded by that. And that's why they get scammed. Exactly. You know? So. It definitely you hit that right on, right on there with that one. Yeah. You know, and it's mm-hmm. like, um, I, I saw a fucking Pitbull interview and he said they were the, the guy was asking him like how he got so success, so successful. And he was like the music business, 10% music, 90% business. Oh, definitely. And it was just, it was so simple, but so powerful because everyone's just trying to make as much music as they can. And it's more than that. Exactly. And you're definitely right. You're hundred percent right. Because I used to think the same way, like, yeah, if I release a song every day, people are going to just go listen and release every week. I'm going to go to record every fucking day. And this is going to be that. I haven't released music in over a year. Technically, like I'll release videos, but I don't release songs. You know what I'm saying? But I had to stop and think like it's not about the music. It's about networking. It's about the business. Everyone cares about the music. Yeah, that's cool. But you'll never get nowhere if you're not making business moves. And that's just that's just that, to be honest. I want to jump into the music. So you have a song called Time Alone. And one of the lines you say, they try to burn my blessings. Yeah. What does that mean? Um... I wrote the song kind of like, I can't say, was it 2021? Yeah, I think I wrote it last year. And I wrote the song when things started to unfold and crumble within the group. So when I was writing it, I was just really thinking like, everything we done built in a sense, you know what I'm saying? Everything that we was trying to accomplish that we wasn't getting, I felt like everything was just burning right in front of me. And I was just like, I can't let all this go for nothing. Like all the money I've spent, all the time I've spent, all the energy I've given, just the rawness of, I think my character as a musician and an artist, I really feel like people was trying to burn my blessings in a sense. And then when things just started to unfold and people started to hear the record and I'm like, but you got to understand like, over the years, people have tried to burn my blessings. You've seen the curse promoters, I mean, artists, and I could engineers, cameramen, I could go through the list. And people were just trying to burn what I felt like I was trying to accomplish. So, yeah, that's what that really means. You have a track, Talking Tough. Yes. You want to explain what that song's about? Okay, shout out my fucking cameraman based. Nah, you can follow him at. at Base underscore NA underscore. That's my brother. Shout out his um his wife. She had a very good, she's very good with the director side and the choreography. So shout out her. I am Aaliyah. I underscore A M underscore A L Y H. Um and shout out my boy Bando, Jay Bando. He was actually a part of FOE too. That's my artist. Like in a way, like I watched him come up from a kid and just really like starting to make some of himself, you know what I'm saying? Because I seen when we was living in Harlem, I seen how rough the kid had it. And just going through all that shit, like this kid was like, I, I shouldn't even say this on you, the kid was like 13 with a piece. Like the nigga had his strings, like at 13, he was just walking around with that shit like, as a young kid. So like I gravitated towards him because I'm like, yo, I see myself in you, you know what I'm saying? So shout out my boy. But that record is really just like, I'm not going to say it's a diss, but I'm going to just say it's a message. You know, in a sense, like it's not really about dissing anybody or responding back. It's just a message. Hey, with my peoples and shout out my brother Los. Um, 
that's my guy. Uh, he really came through for me, really put a lot of shit together. So and shout out to them boys out there in Harlem. Yeah, I'm real ones. Let's get into the new music that's coming out. So you got the track Paranoid? Oh, yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. Um, <sighs> shout out Bass, uh, my cameraman yet again. We just shot a fucking movie in Harlem. Shout out my boy Zell. Zell, not going to say his actual name, but yeah, he's a real one. Shout out his wife, um, Bass wife. Um, the video, shot in Harlem, of course, always shooting in the city because People be people wonder like why I always shoot out there. Number one, I love the scenery, I love the vibe, I love the views. Number two, I spent a good portion of my life out there, and it really like my life changed when I went out there. You know, in a sense. So I'm always feel like I'm connected to Harlem in a way because like that's where I was laying down, and I really ain't have shit at the time. So I really sat out there and chose to really just shoot everything out there and just make this like what I want. Not that. I take away from Long Island because I love Long Island. You know what I'm saying? This is where I'm from. Not born, but this is where I'm from. So straight out of AV, Amityville, shout out to Bill. But I love the city. But Paranoid, it's, um, I'm not going to say that's a diss song either, but it's definitely <laughs> one of those songs. It's just one of those songs you got to listen and really take key. Like, I just feel like other people that don't have nothing to do with a certain issue, they come in and they put their two cents in the issue that has nothing to do with them. I hate people like outside parties that want to come in and make their cousin or their friend's issues their issues more than their cousin or their friend. It's just weird. So it's like you turn to for your mans, huh? <laughs> Call it what you want. I ain't never been afraid of. Yeah, That's, that record's going to be fire. It's dropping next week and the video will probably be another week after that. So. Nice. Yeah, everybody tuned in. Keep a fucking eye out for that. Oh, yeah. I'll make sure I go run them fucking likes and comments. Up. <laughs> you made a Facebook status, and you and this was a while ago, but I want to bring it up. I thought it was interesting. You said, performing tomorrow night, haven't performed or touched a stage in over three years. So I want to know, what was it like being on that stage again? Oh, um, I can't front that. The feeling was incredible. Like, the feeling I haven't felt in years, and I, I really – disconnected from the stage like I don't know when COVID hit we really stopped doing shows before COVID because like other people were doing shows but I wasn't really doing them. you know what I'm saying I kind of even when I moved to Harlem and came back um and moved back just really I don't know I just got tired of it because what were we really getting out of it you go to some of these shows and events, I see the same people performing. I see the same people. You know what I'm saying? The big shows, that's different. It's, you're, you're in a different vibe. There's different people here. You're networking with hundreds of people in different venues. You know what I'm saying? But these little venues, I feel like I was seeing the same people over and over and over again. So I'm like, you know what? Same for me no more. You know? But then when I got back on that stage, it was just the feeling, the, the, the fact that all the, shout out all the OGs on Long Island, Iron Strong Hip Hop, um, we are strong, uh, Long Island, uh, Strong Island, all the, all the big OGs that really took the time with folding and molding this music game. So really, um, uh, it's a shout out to them that really gave me the opportunity. Now I see a lot of people that's going to do their performances and shit. So I'm like, shout out to me that I made y'all want to go do this and do that for the younger generation because they don't really have young people performing there. It's really a bunch of older people from that era that really on that lyrical that powerful that that want to give you a message music so being on that stage in front of them and them actually fucking with the music and really turning me up like because they was charging me up like when i went up on the stage i'm like yeah these niggas ain't about to fuck with me nobody ain't about to fuck with me i'm about to talk that gangster shit and they're gonna look at this nigga like nah nigga this not what we try to they can fuck this nigga so when i got up there and i was just really in motion my boy low had richie there uh, his girl there so everything was just it was just good love like it was just good energy yeah it's a good feeling I don't know if I'll do it anytime soon again but you know it was just a good feeling being back on stage what made you want to do it since it's like been so long like just because it's been so long or like just for the hell of it um mainly because these are the guys that voted me on the uh for the awards last year and I wanted to show them that like the younger generation 
And I'm not even a part of that generation. There's a younger generation than us now. You know what I'm saying? That's coming up. But I feel like our generation is since from like 25, 24 up to like 31, 32. I feel like I wanted to show them that like, yo, even though y'all a little bit older and y'all got your own wave, like the younger generation, y'all got to respect what we doing too. Because the same money y'all spending, some of us are spending the same moves y'all make. Some of them, us make bigger moves than y'all. So y'all got to respect what we doing as well. So I wanted to show them like, yo, y'all got to y'all gotta fuck with us. I know y'all don't like us as much because of the type of music shit we make, auto tune, this and that, or singing, talking about what we talk about. But y'all got to respect it. Y'all ain't got to like it, but y'all got to respect it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nothing stays the same, man. So everybody stop fucking hating, man. Things oh, change. Yeah, I'm sorry. It can't, it can't. It can't be gangster rap in the '90s to gangster rap 2022. Exactly. It just can't. It just changed. You know. It changes. Everything changes. <laughs> if everything comes back full circle as well, but everything changes. You can't really. You can't. You can't beat the odds. You know what's gonna happen. Everything. Mm-hmm. Nothing stays stagnant forever. Yeah. My my coworker is is a DJ, and he's he's big into hip hop. And he told me the other day, he's like, I can't believe. The biggest people in hip hop is Lil Nas X and Drake, who's from Canada, and Jack Harlow from Kentucky. And I looked at him and I said, "Bro, things change." Yeah. You know, big big ups to all of them. They're making moves. They're hot right now. Like he's like a yeah, Canadian rapper. You know, a white kid from Kentucky. You know, Lil Nas X. You know, the cow- with his cowboy song. And I was like, "Bro, things change." What do you want me to tell you? Yeah. <laughs> it's it's more acceptable these days, you know, for the type of music we're making and producing and the industry people are making and producing. It's not like how it was back in the day where you're only gonna make one sound and one sound only. And it's that that boom box, that beatbox type of sound with the cadences. And the R and B, you're gonna make them high pitches song where either someone's writing it and you're just performing it and that's the track out. But that's how it was. Now it's like you can go on a track and fucking scream for 30 minutes and talk about fucking the weed you smoke. And people will like that shit. Mm-hmm. It's way different. It's just more genres of music, I feel like, now. Yeah. You know, we had the gangster, the hood era. And then yeah. it went to and then it went to trap. Like, the 2010s was more trap. And then we had, like, 2016 to 2020 was a big SoundCloud era. And the SoundCloud people and the tats and the colored hair, that was big. And now I think we're moving towards, you know, hip hop mixed with pop, like yeah. heavy, you know? And to me, there's nothing wrong with that, man. It it, it keeps changing. Yeah, even, um, even I feel like Afrobeat is making a wave. Our boy Sin, um, shout out Sin, um, Real Shot Samari on Instagram. And Don Compone, they're from Brooklyn. So they make Afrobeat music. And I see a lot of that now, like when I first heard them. So shout out them because when I first heard it, it was probably from them. Definitely Sin and Compone. But I heard it from Sin first, I think. And his name is Shah, but his artist name is Sin. So when I heard it, I didn't really know what to think of it. But the music was dope. Like the music is fucking fire. And like he kind of mixes like that track drill sound with the afro beat sound so it's just so fucking crazy that now i'm starting to hear it more in hip-hop and like that's going to come up soon too because a lot of people are starting to convert to that type of music you like you said we went from which i'm glad we came out of that fucking like tattoo six nine fucking <laughs> uh kid boo fucking you know that everywhere little pump and everybody's wearing the fucking tattoos and shit i could just never get down with that ever and <laughs> Here's a question I got for you, though, Chris. Okay. And being that you run a podcast, and you dealt with so many different artists and creators and collectors. I personally, this is my take on it, I don't like when people, like, there's a lot of people that made that type of music, that little pump music, you know what I'm saying? And now they're trying to do the music that's out now. So now I personally don't like that shit because if that's the wave you was on, you should have stayed in that wave in that lane because I feel like you can't go from doing that weird shit with tattoos and shit and piercings and all that other weird shit you were doing like shout out to them type of people but that's just not my way you know what I'm saying and now your dress is a gangster and you're doing this and that shit is weird what's your take yeah I think it's not authentic who who are you who are you I don't know 
you're, you're exactly you're, you're, it's okay to change it's, it's like it's like an identity issue yeah like it's okay to change as an artist but it needs to be slow it cannot be some uh overnight type shit so it loses authenticity for me i don't i don't know who you are as a as an artist <laughs> you know it's it, 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 it's it's no, for me you know i need to experience uh the change with you it can't happen in a week it can't happen in a couple of days exactly exactly i gotta know what made you go what made you like you said is a fan just even from a fan standpoint like not even taking my artistry away but from a fan standpoint because i do listen to a lot of people out here just to listen you know what i'm saying that's me supporting you i'll, I'll buy your music i'll listen but i gotta know how you went from uh this dude that was <laughs> <laughs> this dude that was uh shooting dope and doing this to uh the dude that's selling dope you know what i'm saying how you go from the dude shooting dope <laughs> to the motherfucking selling the dope i gotta know don't tell us don't tell us because you know they're doing a lot of weird shit with the cases so don't tell us how you did that shit. But i want to know how you went from that to that like yeah. i want to move with you in a sense you know what i'm saying yeah and yo let me shout out to pacarello and the reason why i shout him out that's just shout out my boy pack that is timeless hip hop to me or pop or whatever it's like that could go in any era. Why is dope. he is just being himself. I was begging this fucking guy to come on literally bet. Come on, man. We got to set up. I was like, dude, I love your music so much. I'm literally driving home from work, singing your music. It's so good. You know, just timeless to me. You know, he's just being him. Pack, shout out pack. I, I seen Pac not too long ago. Actually, I was, where did I see Pac at? I was in the gym with Pac. I was working out with Pac. So shout out Pac. Shout out my boy, Coach Chris, um, also known as Seaways, but he's definitely going to change his name. That's Pac's cousin, but they both do music. Pac, one thing about that motherfucker, he's an artist, a producer, engineer. He do camel work, and he's fucking dope. He's done some big fucking shit in his career, and I feel like people don't give that motherfucker his flowers. And I feel like I told him this, but I'm going to tell you and I'm going to tell everybody else that's going to tune in. He really started that way. Like, I feel like there's people that started that, that wave of music that's being put out by him and that, that subgenre. I feel like that pain that, what can, who, who can I compare to it? Like that rapish era kind of with little Pete mixed into it. You know what I'm saying? I feel like him, um, Maybe AO Bib, Rabs. There's a few of them that like jumped in that lane, but for me, it's definitely Pac. Yeah, man. And and shout out to those other other artists too. They're they're really talented too. Yeah, shout out to them. But Pac is Pac for me. It's definitely Pac. Yeah, man. He's just it it it's just real to me, man. And like you said, how'd you go from this person to now you're selling dope? You know what I'm saying? Exactly. It's like... it's, it's weird. It's weird. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> But um, yo, I appreciate you taking the time and doing this. Uh, before I end it, we're gonna play two quick games. So the first game is called Free Concert. This is how it works. So tonight, there is two concerts going on and you get in for free, but you could only go to one. Okay. All right, so the baby, the yeah, yeah. baby, little baby. I'm going a little big. Why? Um, the one his music is better. That's just number one. Shout out to the baby because his music is dope. Definitely a lot of his older tracks. His new music it I, it has to grow on me a little bit. But little baby just because like, even watching this documentary like I took a lot of shit from his life that I applied to my own life and I just watched like, his struggle the way he went through certain shit. I hear that and I feel that shit in the music. Like if I'm having a bad fucking day, if I turn to some little baby, I'm like, I right, this nigga's really talking about that shit. Like he's talking about what I'm going through right now. And like I really relate to that shit. Like as to where the baby is like, you're more flashy with your music. Little baby is too flashy. It's flashy as well, but the baby, like back then his music was more raw to me. You know what I'm saying? So I'm definitely going to a little baby concert. The baby could perform better though. Don't get me wrong. Definitely, he's a he's a, he's a, one of them timeless performers. Where got to give him his flowers for that. But I'm going to, I'm going with Lil Baby. Jack Harlow, G Easy. Oh, I'm going Jack Harlow. I don't listen to either. I would, but 
Jack Harlow's better for me than G Easy. He's way better. Mm-hmm. For me, he's way better. Just because like the lyricism, the perspective, the way he's just like, in tune with like his own culture, but different cultures and my culture, I gotta give him respect. He come from the hood too. He don't come from like good <laughs> neighborhood. So like I can't really say that. I really don't know too much, but like definitely not G Easy. G Easy, it sounds like someone writes his music, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Whereas the Jack Harlow, it's kind of like you could put him on a scale, kind of reminds me of like an older Drake. I feel like Jake, Drake kind of took him under his wing. So I mm. feel like he kind of is putting out that type of vibe. So definitely Harlow. Damn, I fuck with that. Um, Rage Against the Machine or Nirvana? Mm, nah, that's tough. Going number one. Rage? Yeah. Hell yeah. Why Rage? Uh, I feel like just the energy, bro. It's, you know me, I'm just an energetic person just with music in itself. So, like, the entirety for me just rage because the energy. Yo, just the energy to ring every single fucking time is just dope. But, but yo, Nirvana's pretty fucking raw. Yeah, you can't take that away from me. They got energy <laughs> as well. It, it just be how certain people be coming. Like, can I relate to that shit? Can I turn up with you? You know, mm-hmm. so, yeah. Fuck yeah, man. All right, this one's a little bit harder. Drake or Lil Wayne? Oh, I'm going Drake. Just because, not because Drake's my favorite artist. Uh, since, like, 2009, like, he's been my favorite artist, him, 50. But I'm going Drake just because I don't think I was the biggest Wayne fan growing up. And I know a lot of his music. Like, don't get me wrong, I can sing that shit back and forth, front to back. I could just line for line. I can go bar for bar. Like, I am Little Wayne when I'm rapping this song because he's spitting, talking that fucking shit. But... For me, it's Drake, because Drake's music has got me out of some crazy situations, just with life, relationships, everything. So I'm going with Drake. Thomas, you can't take that away. He's Thomas. No, man. They're Maybe not-, not the newer Drake, but the older Drake. Oh, yeah. Thomas. Yeah, man. Uh, Post Malone, Justin Bieber. Post Malone versus who? Justin Bieber. Post Malone. <laughs> I'm going post Malone, <laughs> not because Justin Bieber isn't dope, but uh, he was dope back in the day. Now it's like I didn't heard your songs like a thousand times. Even if it's a different song, I heard you sing it already. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. you don't change it up. So post Malone definitely. Because once he did that record with Twenty One Savage, he solidified. He's good. Yeah. He's good. He's, oh, he's good to come to the cookout. Post Malone, <laughs> he's good to come to that track. Ref Raff or Lil Xan? Oh, Riff Rap. But his name just, I don't know, bro. Like, I've never even listened to any of his songs. I never even heard a song in his back of the front. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people say the same shit about me. But, <laughs> but, but like, you know I the never name. I've heard none of his songs. But, but you every know time the I name. Seen him in the media, it was like, yeah, but I know the name because he's always in the media for some like depressed shit. It's like, <laughs> I've been there, so I understand. But it's like, bro, like, you're about to die because you like ate some salt like bro that shit is weird and it's like nah i can't get down with you bro and then like you got beat up by a fan you know i'm not jacking that bro you know what i mean you know you know what i'm saying so like that nah, nah, nah. yeah, i'm going i'm, I'm going to rap because i might blow up and act like i don't know nobody so i'm going very fast <laughs> all right uh meg the stallion or nikki nikki all the way why not Meg? I'm from that I'm from that era. Not because like they kind of do similar shit. And I'm pretty sure a lot of them get the shit from Nicki Minaj, but I'm going Nicki just because like she started this shit. Not started it, but she started that whole wave of women trying to push that type of sexual activity, you know, in their music. Not as not saying that like people like Little Kim and Trina didn't do it before. But she just revamped it. So I got to go Nikki all the way. And her music better. Megan's <laughs> dope songs, but Nikki's, Nikki's it for me. Yeah, I agree. Uh, okay, the, the last one is probably the hardest one. Are we seeing Kendrick or Kanye? Kanye for me. Hmm. Kanye for me. That That's actually the fr- I've played this game with a couple other people. That's the first time someone's done... Kanye over Kendrick, and I ask people why, and they say I don't like Kanye's uh, new newer music. Wow, that's what they tell um, me. 
it's Kanye for me because without Kanye, we wouldn't have Drake. Without Kanye, we wouldn't have, um, I feel like we wouldn't have Trap Scott. There's a few people that really took his sound and ran with it and remade it their own style and sound. So it's Kanye for me just because even the new music, I haven't really listened to everything to take a grasp of what I want to get from it, but that nigga's hard. Like, that nigga's hard. You can't take away his creativity. Like, the documentary made me respect this nigga 20 times more because no one believed in this nigga. No one. No one. No one but his fucking mother and, like, his two friends and his cameraman. And I feel like that's how it is with me. No one believed in this nigga. And look what he did. He really transformed hip-hop in a way. Oh, yeah. That's just my take on it. Because no one was doing none of the weird shit, the antics he was doing before Kanye. Every yeah. time you see a rant, motherfuckers get it from Kanye. <laughs> it's Kanye for me, all the way. Kendrick's dope, though. He's definitely top five lyricism mm-hmm. of all time. Just because he ran this new era with lyricism. Yeah. And, and you know, it, it's so interesting with the Kanye story, because for some reason, back then, you couldn't go from producer to rapper. And now it's so common. But for yeah. some reason back then, they just put you in a box. Yeah, they just keep you there. Like, you can only do and maintain this one career choice. We will never respect you as what you're trying to be. So mm-hmm. that's why it's like, yeah, he's a legend. Go yeah. ahead. So. All right, man. That was fucking sick game. Hell yeah. <laughs> that, Hell was yeah. that was dope. Yeah. Dope as fuck. Thanks, man. Yeah, I try, I try to keep it interesting. I try to keep it new. Good people, good comparison. I can't front. Yeah, I, I try to get people similar. You know what I mean? So, yeah. But, um, okay, for the last game, you're going to take down a poster behind me, and you're going to put up somebody new. Okay. So, who the first thing, who are we taking down? Ah, uh, man. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe a little Pete. Fun. Bro, this is Ally on the Rise. That's a Long Island artist. He's a legend. I can't. He's a le- All right, so we're going to have to take down Kanye. Bro, you, that, that's a goat. We, we were who's, just, that we were just, who's, a, who's that above Kanye right there? That, that's the singer of Linkin Park, Chester Bennington. No, we can't take Justin Bennington. <laughs> um, who's, who's that on the far right? Who's that above Little Pete, matter of fact? That's young J. Cole. I thought that was J. Cole. J. Cole can go. You can take J. Cole down. <laughs> Are you sure? Because that's one I'm of the sure. top People lyricists. People probably fucking hate me for that. Like Snoop. People that love Cole. Him and um, uh, 61. But nah, I'm going with Cole. Oh. Not to say Cole ain't dope. But nah, hey, Cole ain't never been in for me, bro. Like, <laughs> I can't relate to the nigga, bro. Like... <laughs> I was in the bottom, you know what I'm saying? So I can't relate to the nigga. Like, nah. Shout out Cole, though. Okay. And like, you're not that nice and bold, so I can't even, like, if that nigga ever wanted to play me, some, I violate him. So nah, take Cole down. <laughs> okay, okay. And I could play some with whoever I want. Whoever you want. M- music. Music. Um, Who does it? Put Drake up there. All right. Gotta play Cole with Drake. Uh, I'm not mad at that. I appreciate that. He, you know, got to give that boy his flowers, man. And he got to be right on the level with Kanye because, you know, they got that comparison going. So, Drake. Yeah. I'm probably going to get a Drake poster, like, after this uh, after Say that. This you, can put, you can put Cole somewhere, you know, in the room still. You know, have him stuck. You know, he's that guy, too. But Drake. Yeah. Yeah, man. That, that's a good answer. I, I hear Drake a lot. I hear X a lot. I hear Uzi. Yeah. I hear Uzi too made like a big impact, surprisingly. Definitely. So, yeah, man. As well. Yeah, that's that's fucking sick, man. Nobody has ever taken down Kurt Cobain, so I'm happy for that. <laughs> yeah, keep Kurt, keep keep Cobain up there. Yeah. Real one, legend. But yeah, man, I'm I'm 100 gonna get a Drake poster. For oh, sure. Yeah. I think he deserves it. Appreciate some that. That's real nigga shit. <laughs> yeah. That's some, some inspiration right there. That's definitely one of mine. You know, like, how how mind-blowing is it that Wayne discovers Drake and Drake surpasses him? Um, I feel like 
that's what you're supposed to do as a leader. You're supposed to set your people up to to to, to be good, but to be better than you. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing when you have kids. I feel like you want your kids to be better and live better than how you did, so they don't have to experience like the drama and the riffraffs of the industry or life itself. So yeah, shout out shout out Wayne because if we ain't get Wayne, we ain't, wouldn't get Drake, we wouldn't get Nicki, <laughs> shit, we wouldn't get Tiger, we wouldn't have gotten all that great music that came out from that era because. I still listen to that music every fucking day. I have yeah. all those albums downloaded on my fucking shit. People think I probably listen to a lot of trap and drill and all the other shit and gangster rap and all. Me. Now I listen to all that old music because that shit is it for me. All this new music is good, even mine and all these artists. But nah, it's it for me. That era was just it was the come up era. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Real yeah. shit. Real shit, man. Yo, we we had a real talk on this fucking episode, man. Hell yeah, this yo, thing. shout out L.I. on the fucking rods. That <laughs> niggas know the fucking vibes with the biggest fucking step of all fucking time, nigga. Big busy in case that niggas was wondering who the fuck it is, nigga. Yeah. Yo, let them know where to where to follow you and listen to the music. Shout out my boy Chris again. Um, Shout out all the artists keep working. But shout out to me, my nigga, because y'all niggas thought I wasn't going to come up out that fucking ground and fly up. So I'm trying to just keep moving with this shit out. Shout out to everybody that really fuck with me for real. Find me at B-I-Z-Y back in E-N-D. If you can't spell that, you need to lay off the drugs. So busy back in at busy fucking back in all fucking platforms. Except for Twitter. That's the truth since 95. Underscore. But yeah, shout out, shout out to this platform. Yeah, we're gonna go up. Make sure y'all get that fucking album next week, next Saturday, Trauma 3. Um going, I'm dropping gems and all the fucking music. And again, <laughs> shout out my boy Chris. Yo, bro, I appreciate you having me on me. It's nothing but love. For real. Absolutely. Busy back end. Appreciate you, man. This was, this you was. Know, it's two legends, two goats just conversating. That's it. <laughs>